What's been the most uh, the most uh, challenging part about getting Salacious going? Well, I mean, I did very brilliantly decide to create a startup in the center of one of the biggest economic recessions known to America, supposedly. So that's been really difficult. Um, getting the word out hasn't been trouble at all. I think that our community is really thirsty for something, but definitely, definitely having capital. It's def it's a, it's the definition of a shoestring budget and finding the time to essentially plug myself and others, which it's all volunteer into this when there's, we're only in the red is this balancing act. It's really difficult. It's really difficult. And I don't want to keep asking people for donations. Like, so I've been giving back and giving back art and, um, I think that it'll eventually balance out. You know, they say the first three to five years of a startup is bound to be, you know, in the red. I'd be happy if we just broke even. You know, I, I see this as something that's really important, and if we just finish to cover our expenses, then I'd be happy. Do you know what I mean? Right. So. What's been the biggest surprise? The biggest surprise? Um... I guess I expected... Not that I want to. I expected to offend more people. <laughs> okay. All right. I totally haven't. Like, I don't just, know if I'm doing my job. Are you disappointed that you people. haven't? <laughs> <laughs> no. I mean, like, the people that are going to be offended by pornography are going to be offended by pornography, right? So it's sort of like, that's a no-brainer. But I guess I figured there'd be more people who would just be upset at the general idea. But, you know, for the most part, it's like 50-50. People that are like, not touching it, or they're like, this is great. Right. And I don't expect it to appeal to absolutely everybody. You know, like one of the reviews for issue number one, like very succinctly put it that like, you know, you may not love everything on every page, but overall you're going to appreciate it. Do you know what I mean? Like it may not give you a boner, but you're going to like it, which right. is sort of the point. So that's for me. That is kind of the point. We should take that for our slogan for daily life, I think. I agree. <laughs> Just appreciate it. <laughs> it may not make you hard, but you should like it. <laughs> now, I want to ask you... Um, a question, a couple of questions about uh, your your other persona you put on, which is international Ms. Boot Black. Yeah, here, hold on, let me put on this new hat. Exactly. Right. <laughs> Congratulations on that, by the way. Thank you so much. Thanks. How did you get involved in boot blacking? Oh wow. Um, so <laughs> I'll go way back when I was very young, as in like five, six, seven. As opposed to having like a security blanket, I had a leather glove that I would smell when I'd fall asleep. I'd feel like this, I'd suck on my fingers and fall asleep. Um, and upon telling my um, partner you have, about You have this, no idea how hot that is. I seriously, that is so hot. <laughs> <laughs> so like, I've always been rooted in leather, one could argue. Um, and upon telling my partner this, when we first started you know, seeing each other you know, in, in a daddy-girl relationship and so on and so forth, like, he looked at me and he was like, wait, what, what are you telling me? Oh my God! You have like an actual leather fetish. Like you, you are rooted in this thing. And so he's like, you should, you should test out boot blacking. And so um, I was taught by Levi, who is currently in California, right. um, five years ago now. It'll be five years in September. And um, you know, got really into it. Learned all the basics. And um, my friend Anna, like bless her, she saw I really liked it. And she bought me my first kit. She like did all this research on eBay and put together this historical kit. Which like if I hadn't had that gateway, like looking back, having to think about it, if she hadn't done that for me, I think that I was interested, but I wouldn't have made that next leap. Do you know what I mean? Right. So um, that was super helpful. It was that was the gateway into me starting to get more and more into it, and then started blacking at like local parties and you know women's parties and so on and so forth. You and Sarah are like. You're like, you have, you're like, you're like the uber TNG of this whole thing. It's right, like, right. <laughs> I believe the comment that was, was that was, was from Queen Cougar was, oh my, we have selected a baby imsel. And, <laughs> totally. uh, but the two of you have so much energy together. I mean, you're really a new mold for this whole thing. Yeah, we're, um, it's an interesting thing. Like there was recently that, and I, I want to, I need to really sit and read, um, Leland's article on it, but the, is leather dead? Um, sort of channel that happened in California last week, this week. Um, I 
I don't think leather is dead. I think it's just transforming. And I think that, you know, Sarah and I may not be old guard, but we are like a fusion of, you know, protocol of old guard with this new, this new wave. Like, I think we're a new wave. Um, not that we're the only ones, but it's the sort of thing that like, if people are going to analyze whether leather is dead, I want to say like, no, it's not. It's just changing. Right. Their definition of leather might be dead, but there's a new one coming up, I think, so. Right, totally. As yeah. is true, like, you know, when I was thinking more about it, like, if we had the same definition of, like, of gay and dyke and fag, and if we had all the same definitions when those words first really came into our purview as, like, a queer community specifically, like, we, we wouldn't exist either, you know? So we have to change. We have to grow. Well, I think there are a lot of people that are, that are put off by this whole thing, and they're still having a hard time accepting B.O.I., you know, so they're they're really right. in shock over this whole thing. So it's interesting, though. I think it goes right on back to it may not give you a boner, but you should just like it. Right. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, I'm having that tattoo on my back. I swear it's great. I love that. Nice. <laughs> what was the, what was the biggest surprise for you going going to uh, International Ms. Leather? I mean, first of all, had you been before? And, and, oh and, yeah. We had okay, good. And what was your what was your biggest surprise other than winning, obviously? But you know, that was <laughs> that was a huge surprise. I I went in with with um. The inclination of what was going to happen post contest if I did win, but I, I went in just thinking like I'm going to do this thing. Um, my biggest surprise, specifically during my title run weekend, um, I think I'm going to have to get back to you on that because, to be honest, it was I got so little sleep and I ran so hard I don't <laughs> fucking remember half of that weekend. Like I remember snippets of talking to people, but I, for the most part, I I really don't remember. That's completely understandable. Everyone has that same sort of short-term amnesia. I totally get it. Yeah, totally. And I, I don't... There there are moments, it's almost like it comes to me in a dream. Like, I'll wake up and be like, oh, yeah, I had the whole conversation with that person. But I, when I try to force it, I, I have no recollection of a lot of things that happened that weekend. <laughs> I, want to, I want to ask you a question about our about our community. And I'll, I, won't, I won't say leather community. I'll just say our community. And that can be the queer, sure. it can be the dyke, it can be you know leather, gay, whatever you want it to be. What's the one thing, if you were in charge of that universe, what's the biggest thing that you would change? Um, I would stop having us be really so actively segregated. And I, I, I think we still are. Like, that's, you know, it's only been, you know, what it was like, April, May, June, you know, it's been like four months into my title year. And I always knew in the back of my mind that we all weren't necessarily hanging out with each other with incredible frequency, but being at more events, I'm aware of how, how segregated we really are. And I believe in, you know, we all need to have like our own spaces for things, but like specifically being at, at IML, like that, that was really interesting to me because the, it was jar difference. You know what I mean? Right. I don't really know how to describe it. Like, I just want us all to, I don't think we all need to like fuck each other. I mean, I think in an ideal world, I'd be like, everyone should just do whatever they want. But, you know, I found myself either very well received in a space like IML and everyone was very friendly, or I was, there was a relative like looking through me sort of situation. And I'm fully aware it was, it was mostly a gender thing. Like, which I respect, like a lot of men going to IML, like they want to have their, have their time. And I don't want to get in their face, right. but. I definitely want us all to be able to like be a little more friendly to each other in general. 